Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Azure Seas of Needle. I am the Heizmeister, and this is episode 14 of the Adventure Mode series. Now, after the last battle, um, where I had to fight against a Stralsund and a Black Current all at once, there have been some weaknesses that have surfaced during that battle. Weaknesses of my fleet, uh, I mean, and I'm thinking about uh, um, adapting my strategy here with the fleet to this, but more on that later. For now, I can uh, safely say that the Medusa has been repaired. Um, most of the damage she received was from the missile strikes from the Black Current. And uh, yeah, all our forces are once again operational. Now, uh, in the comments of my latest uh, German video, you know, the, the White Flare campaign on From the Depths, um, there have been a few people saying that um, my ships are very tanky. However, they seem to lack firepower. Um, or to... Uh, expresses a little bit better in another way. The ratio of armor to firepower is heavily um, yeah, sided to the, the armor side. And that is uh, definitely true. Uh, I do build most of my ships with durability in mind. Let's just take this Arcrux cruiser here, for example. Uh, a ship which I would uh, classify as a run-of-the-mill cruiser with no apparent strength or weaknesses. Well, there we have it. 41.6% of its cost is actually allocated to armor. Um, yeah. Of a total of uh, 290,000. That is a lot of um, materials invested in armor. I see that, um, yeah, but I will probably not um, be stopping uh, to build uh, such heavily armored ships right now. No, oh, yeah. it's a little bit different here with uh, the Medusa. Um, they are only about 30% of its cost are armor. Anyway, about the strategy change I uh, mentioned earlier. Um, in the last battle, I saw that uh, many missiles were hitting the Medusa because um, she was basically on her own. She did not have the protection from nearby forces, um, helping her with sievis or decoys. And um, this is because the fleet uh, spread out once the uh, two contacts came into range. And um, except for the forces that stayed with the carrier, so uh, here the Aegis and uh, the pikemen, um, the rest of the fleet was basically uh, fighting against a black current all on their own. And, well, the Stralsund, of course. And, yeah, I was thinking that I maybe, possibly, could have um, set them all to fleet mode and stay near the carrier to prevent that issue. To let their anti-missile systems uh, help each other out. Okay, what do we have here? Another one of these. I see... Okay. I see lasers. Uh, a rectifier. What are you going to rectify? I did nothing wrong. Anyway, launch all drones, launch all interceptors. Let's get that thing. I'll let the carrier stay here in the resource zone. Um, speaking of resources, by the way. Oh yeah, which, which resource zone exactly? Mm. Combat mode it is, then. Uh, speaking of resources, I plan to um, gather a full load of resources on the carrier before I advance to another level. And this is because I would like to uh, build another unit. Um, this one will be a little bit more costly. But before I do that, I have to... Uh, maybe downsize said unit a bit, uh, make it a little bit more economic, that it doesn't, so that it doesn't cost that much. AI that, very nice. That's a lot of resources right there. 
And uh, yeah, let's see. Fleet move. So, here's the plan. I uh, plan to phase out all the smaller ships and replace them with larger ones um, to basically strengthen the firepower of the entire fleet at once. Um, and I would like to hear what you guys think uh, about the tankiness of my designs. I mean, some of them are on the workshop, so uh, feel free to blow them up as much as you like. And um, if the strategy of having the fleet close together in case a particularly strong enemy spawns is actually a viable one. Uh, the engagement range of the carrier is, I believe, 1000 meters. So one kilometer that should actually be a an, an acceptable range for all the forces that are currently present on the battlefield. Okay, um, how do we go about this? Returning to formation. Yes, return Engaging to formation. Do I still have some resource drones? Ah, yes, I do. They are busy collecting resources. What else would they be doing? Okay, uh, back to the melon seed. And let's see if I can find another enemy. Oh, actually, you know what? Just start harvesting resources yourself. The Aegis has been recalled to the carrier. Because she's getting an upgrade. Um, I have reviewed the design together with Razul and we have decided on a few upgrades and to um, further emphasize the support and defense role that the Aegis should fulfill in our fleet. And thus, she is now getting a second Seabus instead of her rather underperforming main gun and some other defensive goodies as well. Basically, her missile interception capabilities have been strengthened as well as her anti-torpedo capabilities. And I've even added... Yeah, I know, a little bit more armor. Let's see what's... Oh, well, the armor cost is not that high. So yeah, the Aegis has been upgraded. Uh, yeah, she did get a little bit more expensive there. But hey, it's all in the name of progress, I guess. Oh yeah, uh, while we are under attack by a redoubt, I should probably mention that I have spent considerable time in the past um, few days, weeks even, to uh, further improve my APS uh, Tetris and uh, to make it a little bit more efficient. I have also done a few uh, refits of my already existing units that uh, use APS cannon cannons to um, basically improve the Tetris on these cannons, as some of them are quite outdated. And I have noticed an increase in performance, um, even more so when I played around with different types of ammunition for these forces. So uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm getting there. It's a little bit slow. Progress hasn't been uh, very fast, but uh, I'm getting there nonetheless. So, where are we getting now? Uh, we are going towards a resource zone, I assume. It's somewhere in the distance there. And um, yeah, I need to, to gather the fleet again. Still. Um, Maybe the strategy of uh, bunching up the fleet when there's a particularly strong enemy present, um, probably one that also has uh, heavy missiles as its armament, then uh, I guess this should help, as the Seabus on these different ships should cover each other and... Uh, yeah. Maybe this helps. I don't know kind of a, uh, not exactly convoy strategy, but something similar to this. We have encountered our first foe on this higher difficulty setting, and it is actually a slasher. Uh, we have encountered this one before. Um, yeah, usually units have a range of difficulty settings in adventure mode where they can appear. And, um, 
Yeah, we can deal with this one relatively easily, I think. Now, if only our APS projectiles would be a little better. Oh, there we go! APHE! Doing great work. Uh, probably coming from the Arcrux, I assume. Since that's the one that's armed with um, slow firing, but a very high damaging, high velocity APHE projectiles. Not using any railguns, by the way. Um, I'm currently in the process of uh, phasing out railgun components where I can, while at the same time optimizing APS Tetris and increasing firepower of some units. Um, the phasing out of railgun components is because um, I would like to keep the cost at a reasonable level, not inflate the cost too much while I basically... Uh, yeah while I retrofit those units and outfit them with higher amounts of firepower. Yeah, there we go. The sh uh, Slasher has been heavily damaged. We can see now that it is listing quite heavily. And, uh, oh yeah, it's a particle cannon has already been shot off. That's good to see. Now from this angle, um, armor-piercing projectiles should have a tougher time penetrating the Slasher here. Uh, since they would be hitting at a relatively steep angle on this armor belt. Okay. Looks like everything is under control for now, and a lot of AI components there, courtesy of our uh, little bit of EMP flavor, comes with each missile. A totally free, I might add. Oh, oh, and uh, torpedoes. Yeah, torpedoes also carry a tiny EMP charge. At least most of them. Yeah. Annihilate the slasher now. I need those resources. I need them fast. Because with each fight we are also expending quite a lot of resources. So it would make sense to have a force which um, can quickly disable the opponent and um, preferably uh, bypass the armor in some way to get to the innards, to the functional bits and uh, basically yeah, disable them. There we go. And I also will make use of um, this pause feature for quite a lot uh, to not expend any more ammunition. As you see here, uh, this is a uh, a very good example of materials wasted. Um, although these are the cheap uh, heat and hash projectiles usually fired from my fleet's secondaries. Uh, oh, that's a lot of turbines. And done. Oh, look who's back to blind us with their uh, luminous weaponry. The lightning hoods and an exodyne. Something you might encounter in the campaign very early on, if you are really unlucky, that is. So, yeah. Kill it. Kill it now. Also, Caesar Destroyer. You may engage. Let's see. Yep. Looks like our carrier has received some hits. The Melon Seed can take it, though. Where are the smoke deployers? Why is nobody this? deploying any smoke here. Am I missing something? Do I not have laser warning cameras in this in this area? Seems like it. A design issue. A very grave design issue right there. Now we have deployed our little miniature submarine. But I doubt it can do anything against the Exodyne. Especially not when the Exodyne is going at full speed. These Lightning Hoods, um, well, I won't say capital ships, capital hydrofoils? They are dangerous if one is unprepared. Um, that means no smoke and shields to defend against the lasers, um, and basically no weaponry that can either catch up to the Exodyne or fast moving or hit-and-scan weapons. So, uh, cramps unfortunately might not be the most effective weapon here. But for now, 
the Exodyne is receiving a warm welcome. And um, courtesy of our adventure carrier and its accompanying fleet. Though it is also dishing out quite a lot of laser damage. Oh no. Are you trying to be especially honorable today, dear Exodyne? It appears so. I just repaired the Medusa, you know. Wait. That is screenshot worthy. Alright, there we go. Continue. Your little ramming maneuver, which has slowed you down quite a bit. And also scraped more than just the paint off the Medusa's side armor belt. Uh, anyway, revenge will be mine. The Medusa is now opening fire upon its... Well, upon receiving a rather rude encounter with the Exodyne here. <laughs> yep, that's it. Um, in with this uh, rather... The... Yeah, stupid maneuver the Exodyne has. Also scraped off quite a number of hydrofoils of its bottom there, and uh, is now um, torpedo bait. Yeah, that's it. Very nice. Just what I want to see. Now the Caesar's main torpedo armament can be deployed in full force and uh, probably make short work of the Exodyne here. Hey, where's that coming from? Excuse me? What is happening there? That looks like one of my torpedoes. Are you lost? Alright. We see anything on the Exodyne? Yes. Health blow 80% and sinking, which means pause the game, get the maximum amount of materials. Although, now that I think of it, I always get 10% for destroying a component, and I do get 10% from uh, yeah, the wreckage here in adventure mode. Anyway, this is still a good tactic, because um, I do not have to expend materials shooting at a wreck. There we go. And gather all the materials, please. I need them, I need them now. And yeah, I did not have any laser warning systems here, which is uh, an error I will correct immediately. There we go. Laser warners, laser warners, and everywhere else, there are already laser warners in place. Okay. Yeah, that's a design issue. Oh man, what's up with today? Everyone is ramming each other. Hmm. Yeah, um, once again, the Medusa has received a little bit of damage. Let's, let's throw her in for some repairs, I guess. Uh, Medusa, there you are. Light Cruiser. At least the label says Light Cruiser. So, there I am, observing the carrier, and uh, suddenly the guns turned, and I thought, hey, finally something new to uh, basically annihilate, and yeah, it's a Titan. It's the Twin Guard Godly Unit, uh, a Titan. Right, you know the drill with these Twin Guard mechs. Engaging now. Yeah, that's it, engaging now. Target the base plate first and let the rest sink into the water. Uh, let the torpedo sort it out. Here we go. Oh. Oh, aye, aye, aye. Yeah, careful though with this laser. Uh, this is going to ruin my aircraft's day, I suppose. Uh, 
not exactly favorable. I would like to recall them all now, but I'm fairly certain they can handle it. Oh, yeah. Uh, still a little bit uh, erratic cannon fire here and there, trying to hit the base plate, and of course at these ranges even my most accurate APS cannon well, struggles, I'm afraid. So yeah, the Titan laser is no joke uh, against smaller units, I might add, and um, should be reasonably difficult to deal with. But what's even more annoying is the fact that um, whenever the torso here takes damage, the base plate begins to repair it immediately using uh, repair units. That's um, basically a feature that all these twin guard mech designs have, and this combination has probably is probably why it earned its name, uh, twin guard tanking. Um, basically. Having a combination of two units, one is repairing the other, and thus tanking all the damage. Very resource intensive, I might add, but I think we can we can push through. There will be a lot of loot available for us if we can um, basically deactivate the base plate quickly um, and let uh, the torso basically sink to the bottom of this ocean. Uh, speaking of bottom to the ocean, I um, I've read on the Steam forums recently that there were many requests for an adventure mode that takes place uh, on land, like Ashes of the Empire. Uh, yeah, Ashes of the Empire adventure mode. Um, unfortunately, I haven't found a way to basically enable land in adventure mode yet. Um, I am an absolute microbrain when it comes to programming, but um, you are able to adjust the height of the seafloor and the water level in the planet settings in the planetary designer. I have to check if setting the water level below the uh, lowest point of uh, the planet, meaning below the seafloor, will actually enable me to have a kind of improvised land adventure mode with vehicles, well, driving on the seafloor. I don't think this is going to work, but uh, well, it's worth a shot, I guess. We kind of fun in a land-based adventure mode. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Let the base despawn first, and then take out the Titan's torso. Which is... Uh, yeah, should be a hefty amount of resources we can gather there. Yes, give me all those resources. So what's the damage? Ah, oh, the Irrlicht. Oh, our little scout plane. Um, damaged, but still airborne. Doing some fancy maneuvers there. Oh, yeah, goodbye. Um, so, should be able to deal with this in very short order. Okay. Oh, wait a second. The Titan's body is now next to the spawn, and I think we've got this. The Titan has been uh, defeated. Yep, and another hefty chunk of resources for our fleet. Uh, chunk of resources, where are you? Have you already been collected? Seems like it. Alright. Yep, and we have uh, managed to get more than 400k resources. A little portion of it will probably be spent for repairs and um, rearming. But yeah, that uh, that looks actually pretty much agreeable, how this is going so far. And with the Titan, we have encountered one of the more dangerous Twin Guard units. Uh, I'd say the other one is probably the Majestic. Uh, 
or the Abyss, man. I don't know. I always get those two confused. One of them is actually a carrier with uh, um, how many lasers exactly? Yes. And uh, the other one is this uh, construct that uses various sub-vehicles as its uh, weapon pylons. Uh, also an interesting concept that uh, we have seen before with the Lania Kea from the Scarlet Dawn. Honestly, I don't know what happened to the serious aviation battleship. Uh, it has trouble catching up with the rest of the fleet. The rest of the fleet being there in the distance, now where the portals have all spawned. However, we have an enemy on the field. Uh, nothing too major, I guess. Yeah, it's it's one of ours. Uh, it's an Andromeda X Aero Corvette. Well, it has already received a few hits and should be... Well, it should be fairly easy for the serious aviation battleship to destroy, yep. A good hit to the engine section of this lightly armored um, vessel and uh, there it goes. Down. Yeah, they are a bit of a glass cannons. Uh, well, not that would imply that they actually have a great deal of firepower, so they... Uh, glass pistols, maybe? Glass swing shots? Yeah, probably. Anyway, very much dead, but still not AI dead, apparently. But it has lost control. Alright then. So much for this one. Alright then, um, last battle for today, I think. Uh, something has spawned. These um, violet lasers indicate something from the Grey Talents. Oh, ah, Scarlet Dawn, sorry. Uh, <coughs> uh, missiles, I see missiles, I see cans, I mean missiles, and um, it's a serious. Alright then, everyone, you know the drill. Take it down. Let's see, the lamps has not intercepted that many projectiles yet. So there is still hope for us. Okay, let's let the airships and the fighters get into range first and see how we can deal with this. These look like point defense lasers. Might be dangerous if those fighters and airships get too close though. Um speaking of missiles, let's have a look at our missile defense, or well, anti-missile defense, I should say. Right, they're all going after decoys. Those are anti-missiles. Looks alright so far. Let's see how this plays out. Okay, our Phantom Interceptors are already on the scene. Should be in range in mere moments. Ah, uh, I say mere moments, but... They're still flying. Okay. Still getting there. Even more missiles being launched from the Sirius, but I guess the decoys are just too much. And the missiles keep getting distracted. You might wanna... Yeah, there we go. Right, 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 right. As soon as the airships have circled around this um, front side, or from the broad side, or whatever you wanna call it, they should be able to lay into the sides and rear armor of this one with their lasers and their particle cannons. Oh yeah, here we go. Lots of EMP strikes, and... Um, we have we have done some damage to its front. Still, the missile silo is operational. I can see a lot of uh, expensive and probably very delicate components there flying out of this ship. Ooh, that looks painful. <laughs> right then, I guess APHE is the way to go for some of my units. At least those that can afford it. Um, its laser has been defeated, so this is one threat dealt with. 
Although I cannot see that many missiles from our side getting through, uh, the serious missile defense is very much active still. He says as two missiles strike the side armor of this one. Another salvo of uh, huge missiles released. Let's see where this one goes. Probably into space after the decoys. As it should. <laughs> right then, please give me a hefty sum of materials. The fleet really needs this one. Yeah, that's a one million craft. 100,000 should be in for me. Uh, or maybe even more. I don't know. Right, it's going down. It's going down. And we have the fragment already on the scene and prepared to do some cutting with its with, it, uh, with its cutting edge uh, yeah cutting tools yeah I know I know no I'm not sorry for this one and here we go how's the effectiveness I mean for a second just look at the size difference size difference between the Sirius, a 1 million plus craft, and the Fragment. This is a really compact vehicle with a lot of expensive components and um, yeah, very volume efficient. But yeah, now that we can lay into it, I guess it's over for the Sirius. And let's see how uh, bountiful this resource dump is going to be. Yeah, it's like we have defeated it. Uh, right then. Yeah, I see. I say volume efficient and there's entire cafeteria in there. Okay, okay. I guess that the creators of these vehicles do have some fun with them. <laughs> That's nice. All right, these oh, large, uh, huge missile gantries. Oh yeah, those cost a lot. Right, yep, that's 120,000 resources for me. Thank you very much. Hmm. Another one of these and we can hit our goal of amassing a certain number of resources. How do our units look? Uh, look actually in in acceptable condition. Right, collect these things, collect them quickly before something else comes around and... Oh, hello! Did you see this missile there? <laughs> yeah, it's still turning around to follow a decoy. Ah, these um, decoys that go into uh, basically space are very effective, uh, even more so than... Oh. Sorry. Um, the decoys that are being tethered to the main vehicle. Uh, why are you firing all of a sudden? I thought this is it, the series has been defeated. We have already collected all the materials, haven't we? What the hell are you? Looks bigger? I don't like the music. This sounds like boss music. Ah. Exterminator. Okay, one more fight and then that's it. I swear. Uh, carrier, go on the offensive. The Exterminator. Uh, equipped with uh, what the white flares do best. Uh, kinetic rail-assisted projectiles, I assume. Probably lots of torpedoes and missiles, although I don't see any apparent missile silos here. And, uh, yeah... Also a little bit lacking on the torpedo department. Um, still, almost one million. I want this one. Right. 
There's only one way to win, and it is going forward. Oh, yeah, I said no apparent missile silos. Yeah, look at that. Ay, 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 ay. Ah, great. Now the uh, aft turret opens up on our fighters. Uh, I should have seen that one coming. Looks like we have disabled one turret. APHE. Doing the job it was designed to do. At least I assume it was APHE. Uh, it could be something else. Maybe heat. I'm fairly certain it wasn't a missile though. At uh, Kaboom? Wait. Hang on. Why are you going... Oh, AI did. Okay. I accept this. Hmm. Nice craft though. I really like the the white flare design. Uh, the white flare designs that have been rolled out recently. They look awesome. Also, big inefficient engine. But yeah, volume efficient, I mean. You know, just not fuel efficient. Right. That's it then. More resources for the fleet. And anything else? Oh, just a few stray missiles, nothing else. Okay, looks like the seas are quiet for now. Which means I can probably end this episode here while collecting all those resources. Well then, oh, the Man and Seed has taken, let's see for a moment, has taken some hits. They have not penetrated deeper into this carrier here. My uh, little bunker is still intact though. That one was actually fairly dangerous. Yeah, that could have been very dangerous. One stray shell into the head of Rambot and that's it for our adventure. So yeah, gathering these resources and getting out the new design is of utmost importance. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this episode of the Adventure Mode in From the Depths. I am the Heizmeister and I hope you see you again on the endless seas of Nita. Take care and goodbye.